guys are ridiculous. These guys are ridiculous. Now, how about them damn Celtics? And we are back with another episode of How About Them Celtics. Sam and I are here recording on Monday, July 8th, talking about more Celtics Summer League stuff. Whole roster came out today, uh, talking about the rookies a little bit, a bunch of other stuff. How you doing today, Sam? I'm excited. We have actual things to discuss on the show today. We have uh, a slew of fun content coming for you this week because now we know about who's on the Summer League roster, so we can finally do a little bit of a deep dive. We'll talk about the roster today, but you'll really learn about these guys from us as the week rolls on leading up to the 13th, which is the first game, right? 13th, first game, yes. 12th, that would be really 13th, 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 13th. All right. Well, yeah, we have the Summer League roster reveal. You finally got to hear from the rookies today, so we're going to talk about that too. And then we will move on in to the emails, the NBA section, some minor catching up to do, then we'll have the rat list. So make sure you subscribe, leave a like, hit the bell so you don't miss any of our daily uploads coming at you with pods like this, Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday. Again, those Summer League videos are coming out this week, so keep your eyes peeled for those. And yeah, tons of fun stuff coming. Yeah, like Sam said, we'll, we'll talk more in depth about all of the players in individual videos. So if you're listening to this on audio platforms, make sure to check out the YouTube channel. Uh, we'll look at some highlights, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, let's talk about the Summer League roster because it did officially drop today. Um, I'll pull it up on the screen here. So if you're watching on YouTube, you can take a look. Uh, it's just in my email, so I'm just going to pull it up in my email. Um, but we have Tyler Cook, J.D. Davison, Tristan and Aruna. Uh, Ron Harper, all uh, Jalen House, Eddie House's son, Drew Peterson, Namish Keda, Jamius Ramsey, Baylor Shireman, Jaden Springer, Killing Tilly, Jordan Walsh, and Anton Watson. Uh, DJ McClay will be the head coach of the Summer League Celtics. Um, <clears throat> so we knew about most of this. The only guys we didn't know about, we didn't know about Tyler Cook, Jalen House, uh, Jamius Ramsey, or Killian Tilly. I think those are the only four guys we didn't know about. Unless I'm missing somebody, but we didn't know about those guys uh, coming in to summer league. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll pull up pictures of each of them. Just, so you can put name to face. If you're on YouTube, uh, just, well, just, just so we're not talking about random people. And we it's can kind of have funny extra context. Um, but yeah, we, we know the roster now it's, it's something, right? Let's see. <laughs> we, we had gotten some insight into what the roster might be. And this was exactly it actually. <laughs> Yeah, we had heard through the grapevine <laughs> that uh, they had these guys in the roster, and it was indeed finalized. There was another name that we had heard about, but I guess it didn't pan out. Yeah, I don't think that ended up panning out, or it will be like a replacement or whatever option. But Tyler Cook is the first guy, uh, most notably because he went to high school with Jason Tatum, Shamanad, mm. uh, twenty six. So I assume they played there at the same time. Um, I can double check, but Cam he's posted also a picture of the two of them. I'm pretty yeah. sure they did. He's also from St. Louis, so you have to imagine this was at least a little bit um handshake. Hey, get my guy a chance. Uh, as for Tyler Cook himself, he's got some NBA experience. He's played in 65 NBA games across a few years. Hasn't played in the league since 21, 22. Uh, has spent the past couple of seasons with. I don't know if he's been. Has he been in the G League or has he been? <clears throat> Let's take a look. Uh, he was in overseas this past year. Um, in couldn't tell you where this is. He was in the NBL for a little bit, but I don't know where about a loan day is. Um, but in 39 games across all of his international appearances this past season, 10 points, four and a half rebounds, one assist, uh, doesn't really take threes. So that could be a downside potentially. Um, <clears throat> but that's Tyler Cook for you. Next guy on the list is oh, I lost the list. Uh, we know Tristan and Arena. Jalen House, like I mentioned, Eddie House's son. Uh, I know he played at New Mexico State this past year. Oh, I almost said New Mexico. I think it's just New um, Mexico. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Not uh, State. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, he played at New Mexico this past year. Uh, he was in the tournament. He's six foot, um, 23 years old. Tyler Cook's 26, by the way. Played two years at Arizona State, then three at New Mexico. Averaged almost 16 points. Um, three and a half rebounds. Three and a half assists on not great <laughs> efficiency, but um, I will say I asked Baylor Shireman today, who's been the most competitive guy at practice. And he said himself first, but he also said Jalen house was up there as well. So if you want some insight, that's a fun tidbit. Um, <clears throat> I mean, that was an impressive run. They put together to make the tournament. Like they had to win the mountain West and he was a big part in that. So he's somebody that could play in big games. Obviously the efficiency isn't quite where you'd like it to be. It's also a six foot guard winging at one sixty five, So he's got some work to do on his, physique before 
actually stepping on into an NBA court, he'll be a liability right away. But, you know, the skill set seems to be there at the very least. Definitely. Um, Jamius Ramsey is another name. Um name that I know and I, I liked him a couple years ago coming out of the draft. I think he ended up with the uh Kings to start his career. I can't find it. Yep. Uh here we go. Jamie Ramsey. He's 23 still, 6'3 guard. Uh I liked him. He he was just kind of like a hustle guard whose three point shot wasn't quite there. Uh, as you can see from his time throughout the league. Uh he played in seven games with the Raptors this past year. Um <clears throat> wasn't too efficient, but uh in the G League is where he's played for the most part the past few seasons. Uh, if I can skip through this part of it um g league this past year uh, across 20 total games averaged 22 points eight rebounds 3.7 assists 1.3 steals on uh 55 44 or 41 splits so mm. he actually had a much better season shooting from deep and he took over four a game too so he slowly improved his three-point shot he's a pretty good three and d guard um like i said i liked him coming out of um college he went to texas tech uh was a one and done so it feels like he was a little bit of a maybe could have spent another year in college and improved his draft stock but uh yeah he he's he's a good player man uh he's another guy i think fans should be excited to watch in summer league I do remember him cooking the Celtics in that G League final this year. I was there. Uh, he had a hell of a game. So I'm sure people within the Celtics organization literally had the Avengers sitting courtside for that one. Took note of the performance. And we're like, okay, this guy might have a little bit of juice to him. And you can see like he's a little bit bigger than the house is. He has more of an NBA body. At six foot three, one ninety five, he can probably hold his own in some switches on defense. So Keep your eyes out for that when you're watching these games. This might be somebody they really like and take a swing on when the season rolls around. At the very least, you could see him up in Maine. Definitely, yeah. I, I like Jamie Ramsey uh, as a potential name to get that last two-way spot because, uh, spoiler alert, we'll talk about it in a little bit, but J.D. Davison did take the second one. Um, last new guy we need to learn about, and again, we'll watch um, highlights and stuff in individual videos. I'll put them into your list, but Kelly and Tilly uh, spent some time with the Grizzlies. Twenty-six years old, uh, out of uh, he's from France. Um, six foot nine. Spent this past season in the G League, I believe. I'm gonna double check, but uh, he played with. <clears throat> no, I don't he, think he's he international. Uh, he must have gone overseas. Um, no, I don't know where he, he was this past. He season. just had he like injured. a two year hiatus. I did a little write up on the G League roster for Celtics blog, and I was looking at him on Real Gym, and I was just like, What is going on here? What what happened in these two years since he's played in the NBA? He hasn't played internationally. This is a very interesting spot. At the very least, it's like a I don't, I don't want to call it a hustle situation, the Netflix movie, but it feels like he's working his way back into basketball and trying to get a spot. Yeah, I don't know. That is weird. Um, huh. Let's see. Former. Okay, so he did an interview in May this year with Gonzaga Nation, um, which is SB, or excuse me, Sports Illustrated. Yeah, so he said, you might have seen Killing Tilly walking around Spokane the past several months. It's hard to miss. Recently bought a home in Spokane, has been working his way back to health as he continues to pursue a career. Um, October 2020, Tilly has spent. Uh, the past two seasons recovering from injuries, including back surgery, now healthy and hoping to get back on the court. Haven't played in two years. I'm just excited to get back to it. I'm healthy now. So it sounds like he was dealing with some health issues uh, over the past couple seasons and couldn't make his way back onto the court, but is hoping to now. Uh, I remember him actually being a pretty, I don't want to say like super promising prospect as if he was like this first round pick or whatever, because um, he was an undrafted guy. But I remember watching him or, or seeing him in the Memphis uniform the first couple of years. And he was like, okay, like him and Xavier Tillman are like, okay, they got a couple of young things that could be interesting here. Um, so I'm very intrigued to see what he looks like uh, after going through some injury issues uh, during the Celtics summer league team um, of the four though. I think I'm definitely most intrigued to see what Johnny Ramsey looks like. Cause he, he screams like a guy the Celtics like would like to have on their team um, if they can find a way to incorporate him. Yeah. I, I agree with you as I speak away from my microphone. Um, Again, having watched him essentially take over in the G League final, I think that stuck with a lot of people. And going forward, that's something for him to build off in this organization to really cement himself as one of the three two-way guys because they do still have that spot. Who knows how confident they are in J.D. Davis. I know the organization spoke highly about J.D. today, and we can segue into that if you want, or we can talk about the other thing. Um, but this is year three of J.D. being on a two-way. We're getting to a point. I know he's only like 21, so. 
there, there's a little bit more room for growth with him at his age and Ramsey's two years older. But it does raise the question, like, how many more years are the Celtics going to keep him around before they decide, one, he's not going to be able to grow here, or two, they just don't like what they're seeing in him. And if they do decide to move on, it feels like Ramsey can kind of slide in and try and get on the development track. Yeah, it feels like, and we've talked about it now, like you said, Celtics have re-signed J.D. Davis into a third two-way contract, so he'll be back with the Celtics, probably the main Celtics, uh, heading into next season. It feels like they do like J.D. a lot. They do like the progress he's made. and I mean, you can see it in his, in his stats. Like He has made significant progress in the G League since joining the Celtics. It's just a matter of can that three-point shot ever come around? Can the defense ever get to a sustainable level? Like I, I do think that they like the way he's conducted himself. They like the way he's worked. They like you know what they've seen in the G League. He's very clearly a talented playmaker and a, and a driver and all this stuff. And he's a freak athlete. Um, he, just, he just can't find the three point shot at a consistent level. And I think they're investing him in in him. Excuse me for another season. I mean, he averaged twenty one points, eight point six assists, and five point one rebounds. Like the stats are there. He's just got to improve the efficiency. Got to improve the defense a little bit still. Even though I don't even think he's excuse me, that uh, unplayable on that end of the floor. But <clears throat> he'll be back in Boston. It does feel a little weird because you do feel like maybe he should hope to get some minutes elsewhere, but they seem happy to have him. Um, Austin Ainge talked about it a little um, in media availability today <clears throat> and said, like, yeah, we're, we're pleased with the uh, – this was before we knew he was on another two-way, so Bobby Manning was asking, like, hey, do you think he'll bring him back, et cetera. And he's like, we're pleased with this development. We're, we're, you know, we like what we've seen so far. We like the way he's improved, uh, and we're excited to keep moving forward, kind of like hinting at it. But, um, yeah, J.D.'s back in Boston again. Yeah, he, he has a, a way to go when it comes to being ready for the NBA. feels like – I really don't want to be wrong in this. It feels like he turns the ball over a lot more than he should. Uh, I remember watching the summer league games last year. He was turning the ball over quite a bit. It was one thing that stuck out. He does do a good job of setting up his teammates. The assist numbers are there, but like you mentioned, efficiency needs to come along a little bit and the turnovers are part of that. It's not a perfect science. We've seen him play pretty decent ball up in Maine. He was a big part of the team success this year. He was probably the star of that team. And yet, he comes up to Boston. He really doesn't get in the games very much. So we really don't get much of a sample size of him. But last year in the summer league, I just was not overly impressed. So we'll see what this year brings. <laughs> Would love to see him improve. Um, next thing, Wick Grosbeck recently talked about the sale of the Celtics, gave some more new details, some more insight. Um, Brian Rob wrote about it for Mass Live, so I'm just going to steal the quotes from there. Thanks, B. Rob. Uh, he said, I want to clarify, it's not my majority stake, Grosbeck said. The control of the team is owned by my family, so it's a family that I belong to. And then I have the Celtics family I also belong to, so there's an intersection and uh, there's an involvement. The family has been involved for 22 years. There's been discussions and thoughts about estate planning and family planning. Um, so basically saying Grosbeck began his remarks about the sale by making a clear distinction between the ownership of the Celtics franchise itself. Despite serving as governor, Grosbeck acknowledged that he was not the principal owner of the stake. Uh, <clears throat> he also revealed new details about the plan to sell. The plan, the expectations to sell the team in two parts, 51% going fairly soon, Grosbeck said, and 49%. Um, then closing in a second closing. That's expectation in 2028. I'm planning or expected to stay on until 2028 as governor, and we're going to hire bankers and advisors, and this is going to be quite a bidding process. Um, then he said that's how we planned it out. I would say that's the expectation going into this process. Um, I would love that to happen, and that's the expectation. We'll see what plays out and goes from there. Uh, it's it, you know in terms of whether or not he'll return until 2028. Um, he didn't comment on any buyers, but he did acknowledge Pags. Steve has been a terrific, terrific lead partner, lead co-owner in many ways. Brought Danny Ainge to the table back in the day when we were looking for a general manager. Steve has been a great and a great person. We would welcome him for sure into the bidding process. Talked about, you know, he failed to directly address the possibility of John Henry, uh, et cetera. But he said, we haven't even begun the process, but the family has agreed to find new ownership group coming in that will make everybody proud of the Celtics moving forward. So it does sound like Wick understands uh, not to go full TikTok, but he 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 understands what the uh, assignment is. He he knows he not to mess what's it up. at stake. Yeah. This is this is no, <laughs> you know, nothing to sneeze at. You got to make sure it, it's more than the money. It's the person behind the money. You have to leave the team in good hands, especially with Wick. I think it's something we always felt was going to be the case when we heard the news break. It was like, okay, well, Wick's a great owner. Wick truly cares about the Celtics, as do the rest of the people in the ownership group. So I trust that he will move on in the best way possible. And it was a gut punch to find out he was going to sell the team. But again, like 
he cares about the organization. He's a Celtics fan first. So like, I don't think he would set it up to be like just in the dark ages for 10, 15 years after he leaves. It wouldn't make any sense. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active users. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps on Prize Picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Get in on the daily action with your friends and become part of the Prize Picks community. If you're looking for promotions, Prize Pick has got you covered every single week. From lowering select player stats projections on Tuesdays to help your lineup hit, or getting your entry fees back if you have a losing lineup on Fridays. Prize Picks is available in more than 30 states across the country, including California, Texas, and Georgia. Sam and I use Prize Picks all season long. You guys saw it before all of the pregame shows, but now it's the offseason, so we got to find some other things. Take a look at the Red Sox, Jaron Duran. Never know. He's been pretty good. Might as well take a look at his hits. You look at Caitlin Clark, the WNBA. You look at Alyssa Thomas, the WNBA, the Connecticut Sun, right there. The points, more or less, who knows? They're pretty good this year. Download the Prize Picks app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. That's code CLNS on Prize Picks for a deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Definitely. I, I mean, Wick clearly cares about the team. He clearly cares about the organization. And I don't think he's going to sell the team to somebody who wouldn't share that same passion for the franchise. Um, I'm just really intrigued to see who's going to come out of the woodworks here. <laughs> I'm, I'm very interested. Not FSG. Not FSG. <laughs> Please, no. I saw some random rumblings. Um, the oil boys? About- Jeff Bezos. <laughs> Jeff Bezos. Oh, because he, he sold Amazon <laughs> stock or whatever last week. He sold Amazon stock, and he, he there's like a photo of him like meeting with Tom Brady or something. <clears throat> there was like some picture that went around. Maybe I'm I'm losing my mind, but I swear I saw a picture of Jeff Bezos. We need to Brady, but... dedicate a section of the pod to business. Have to keep up <clears throat> with the business not. world for the next four years, Jack. <laughs> Absolutely not. Maybe I'm lying because I don't see anything. I think it was just connecting the two things together. Anyways. Next thing, uh, Celtics rookies, Baylor Shireman and Anton Watson both spoke to the media for the second and first times today, respectively. Baylor Shireman had an introductory press conference. Um, uh, Austin Ainge and Celtics summer league coach DJ McClay also talked to the media. So have a little bit of tidbits from everything. I'm just going to read off my Twitter because I tweeted out most of the, the good tweets anyways, rather than picking through all of the um, – <clears throat> transcriptions uh some of the stuff austin ainge said uh he talked about the roster said a lot of good uh players a lot of depth think it's a good team they played hard again he talked about jd said he came up very young in the draft the last two years of made he's improved we're very optimistic specifically noted that like he's still younger than the rookies we drafted this year so we can give him a little bit of time <laughs> um this is was probably the most interesting thing that austin ainge said said uh i was asked about like the continuity having all the guys back next year he said, extremely grateful. We had some guys turn down more money other places to come back. So it sounds like the Celtics were like, yeah, we're, we're back, back, baby. <laughs> and I think that says a lot about the team's character. Like, even as we were all watching them compete last season, it was a very easy group to root for. It felt you could really believe in everybody top to bottom, all the way down to the two-way guys. And then you have... Several question marks going forward from Luke Cornett to Hauser to Tillman, who was traded for midseason. Even Kata, who came over last summer from Sacramento and kind of went up and down between here and Maine, earns a full-time contract instead of just a two-way. All of them come back. I would be I would imagine Cornett was it if there were multiple guys, he was definitely one of the ones to have a bigger offer somewhere else, just because. He was incredible. Anytime he really got minutes, I'm sure other teams would have looked at him and been like, it would be sick to have a guy like this come off the bench. Like you don't think the Knicks would be knocking at the door for Cornette after losing Hartenstein. I bet they would love him. So you've got him. I don't, I don't know if I want to put money down on anybody else, but it feels like Cornette definitely took a pay cut. And then you, you turned out to be very correct. Jack talking about Luke Cornette Cornette wanting to be the first guy. Yeah, Fred Katz of the Athletic came out and revealed that Luke Cornett specifically timed up his free agency announcement, so it would be the first free agent announcement, and that's just hilarious. Um, I bet Tillman took a pay cut. I bet he could have had better offers elsewhere. Him and Cornett seem like the most likely um, to have gotten bigger offers elsewhere. Maybe Nimi Ishikata, but 
it doesn't feel like that just because he's younger, but I feel like X might have taken one as well. Um, DJ McClay also spoke. Uh, he said, just, you know, we're I focusing you a lot on took a pay cut. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> he said right now in general, as a staff, we're focusing a lot on teaching. Uh, he was asked about his head coaching style <laughs> and he said, he's still figuring out, but quote, I can tell you for a fact that I'm very loud. So he, he prides himself in being very vocal. Um, he was asked if he feels pressure in summer league because of the way that the season just ended. He said, uh, it's the Celtics. Of course, the expectation is to win here. So good to know that they're carrying that over into this as well. Um, I asked him about the departure of Charles Lee, uh, Blaine Miller and Jermaine Buckner. He had some nice words to say about all of them. I don't have the exact, actually, I think I do have the exact quote. Mm-hmm. Um, he said, let's see. I thought I had the exact quote. I might not. Um, he talked about all they brought to the table, et cetera, et cetera. Um, said Charles Lee was just his constant, like positive presence said Jermaine Buckner was the best, like start of the year end to the year, like grow, grew the most as a coach talked about Blaine Miller's basketball mind, which was a nice thing to hear. Um, and then he, I asked him like, I said like, Oh, are you looking forward to this opportunity? And you know, what are you going to miss from those guys? And he started, well, first of all, I'm stoked. Like he, you could just tell that this guy is so excited to coach the team. I think he coached it last year too, but he's, he's, he's very, very excited to be the head coach of the summer league team. It's time for him to cook. This this is a summer league roster that should have high expectations. Nothing different than the the top squad competing for championships. All of the pressure, all of the expectations should follow this team. Anytime they lose, people should go on Twitter, pitchforks, torches, screaming about losses if they happen. Because the the top five on this team might be the best in this entire summer league. You're telling me you got Nimi out there? Nimi being out there is just a cheat code, it feels like. So DJ McClay should absolutely be able to cook with the group he has. And even going you know, beyond that, we did a quick brush over of the other additions, and some of those guys are really impressive. So I can't wait to watch Summer League. I'm excited to see the type of ball that the Celtics play, and hopefully it's winning ball. Yeah, it feels like the Celtics are ready to carry over their uh... – their win no matter what mentality moving forward. That's Fan what they base. want to do. I want to see people crying on Twitter. <laughs> uh, Baylor Shireman and Anton Watson also spoke, like I mentioned. Uh, Anton Watson uh, was up first. Both of all, both of them, excuse me, first of all, just like beaming. Like you could tell how excited they were to be there, how excited they were to talk to the media, how excited they were to be in Boston, be a part of the Celtics. It was very clear. Like these two are very, very excited to get going. Um, Anton Watts was asked about like the lead up to everything. He said, just a lot of work past two months, the pre-draft process, just to get this point here, my name called. Uh, And then he said, now it's back to work. Also noted that the Celtics were his first pre-draft workout. Um, Mm. Asked about his first impressions of the Celtics said winners legacy, just the mentality towards everything here. The first time we met in here, they said it's different here. So they're, they're really hammering that home. The different here slogan. And you know what? Now it is. You backed it up. So (laughs) say it all you want. (laughs) How, how great would it be if it was like, what is your first takeaways from like being here? Joe is a weird motherfucker. Imagine he's just like, (laughs) that dude is a freak. He comes right out and he's just like, I don't know what I'm going to have to deal with all season, but you can tell that he is a menace behind the scenes. Somebody asked him that because there was a community event afterwards uh, in Roxbury where they held like a junior Celtics camp. um, And somebody asked him about Joe and they gave a very bland like, oh, yeah, he's great. It's so cool to learn from, et cetera, et cetera. But as they were asking the question, you could see Anton Watson like slowly grin, like slowly smirk. So you can tell that Joe is just doing some fuck shit. (laughs) <laughs> he met them. Um, Baylor Shireman also said, like, oh, what was his message? He goes, he said, shoot threes, play defense, and rebound. And I said, okay, coach, I-, I can do that. I mean, when we were looking at tape before the draft, like, we were seeing all those things. We were like, nine rebounds a game as a, as a forward in college is no joke. Like, Celtics know what they're getting into if they get him, and he's someone who can create when he has the basketball. He's comfortable shooting threes. He's good moving without the basketball. And then his ability to defend is – really yet to be seen. I don't know how many highlights we got to see in the mixtape, Jack, but that's one thing to keep your eyes on in summer league. I know people in the the last video were kind of pissed. We didn't talk about these guys and I just figured we did the two videos on them. But if if you want like quick look for things and each of them, Shireman pay attention to how well he plays defense. Obviously you want to see the offensive game, but defense is going to be the measuring stick that gets him out there in the regular season. And for Watson, you just want to see more of what he has to to offer. I know the comp is old Al Horford. Kind kind of see it like the efficiency from the field is there, the three point shooting is there, 
is the slow shot going to affect him? And how aggressive is he underneath on defense, hitting the glass, you know, closing out possessions and such? I know we got to see a little bit of that in those tapes, but there's your rookie summer league preview. New title, Jack. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, Bailey Shireman also talked, like I mentioned. Um, oh, sorry. I wasn't done with Anton Watson yet. Uh, he said it's special to be a part of this. And then the other thing that a lot of people picked up on, uh, he was asked about what he envisions his role being like in the NBA. He said kind of like the Al Horford role. I think learning from mm. him is going to be huge. And people were very pleased to hear that, obviously. <laughs> the whole, also the whole said, media uh, scrum just starts to yeah. nod. They're like, mm, yeah. Also said Al was uh, texted him as soon as he you know got drafted, et cetera. And he, oh, he, cool. he was like, but I think he's still enjoying his break, which is much deserved after the season he had. So I was still, I don't know where he is, but he's he's not Just opened him, up so. Celtics blog. First first thing, headline from Bill. Anton <laughs> Watson sees himself as a young Al Horford. This picture is so funny, too. <laughs> <laughs> my god um yes Baylor Shireman also talked said um it's exciting to say the least just super excited to be part of this organization the best organization in basketball the fans the best in the NBA as well uh <clears throat> was asked about Boston his first impression said it's a little different than Nebraska for sure obviously it's a beautiful city I actually grew up a Red Sox fan so I'm excited to get out to Fenway and see the green monster myself. He was asked about why he's a Red Sox fan. Said it's because David Ortiz and Dustin Pedroia were his favorite players growing up. Um, and Is yeah, he overall a Boston sports today. fan? Did he talk about that? Because there was a picture of him before the draft, like wearing <laughs> Celtic stuff. Like years uh, he ago. didn't he didn't say anything about basketball. He just said he was a Red Sox okay. fan growing up. So I'm I'm, I'm unsure about <clears throat> excuse me the rest of that. Um, but yeah, both also went to the community event in Roxbury. I'll put it on the screen now for YouTube viewers. Um, with Leon Poe, who's just a part of the community event team now, um, <clears throat> hanging out, did some drills with the kids, uh, as you can see here. We're hanging out, <laughs> directing traffic. Also, for what it's worth, Bill Sharpen's huge. <laughs> he's a big dude for a wing. Like Anton Watson's listed at six eight, so I guess he's a bit of an undersized big. But like they're damn near the same height. Like Sharman's like a little bit shorter, but Baylor Sharman's a very, mm -hmm. very big win. Uh, also noted that he no um models his game a little bit after Joe Ingles. So if that makes you feel any type of way, there's that as well. Shocker, lefty white guy. <laughs> lefty white guy, all the comps for Joe Ingles. Looks like all the draft experts. Nailed it right on the head. They 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 shot they right down the middle on that one. Yeah, they got that one nail on the head. Um, yeah, that's. I don't think there's anything else. Seriously, in terms of what they said. But the next question, <laughs> follow up question: What makes you model your game after Joe Ingles? How do you decide that? How do you land on him? No, no, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> um. You got anything else uh, on the rookies or anything like that? I think I covered most of the big uh, quotes, et cetera. Yeah, I mean, you got the quotes. I mean, I'm excited to see what their skill sets have to offer in summer league. Like, I really want to see how well Shireman fares on the defensive end, and I just overall want to see what Watson offers on like a larger scale. Yes, we saw some clips like heading into the draft, but how's he going to fit into an NBA team? How's he going to be able to play both sides of the ball? Is he going to stretch the floor? All of those things are going to be important, especially when he's competent, young Al Horford, all that Horford, whatever. You need to see some of that translate a little bit off the bat just to get your hopes up, get a little excited. Yeah, for sure. Uh, okay, next thing. Jason Tatum got a haircut. <laughs> Tatum he reported, haircut. Yes, reported to Team USA camp in Vegas today, and he is rocking a new cut. I'll pull it up on the screen here. I assume it's just going to come up when I type yeah here we go here's a video of tatum in a press conference you can get the gist for it he's back to rookie year jason tatum hair is gone fully just shaved it all off he looks mm. much younger now uh but i like this yeah i like it too i think it's fun um i so i wrote about this for si this morning a lot of people on twitter are excited about the jason tatum haircut talking about you know the three point strokes gonna come back Jason Tatum with a buzz cut. 43.4%, 37.3%, and 40% from three. He grew out the curls in 2021. So the 2020, 2021 season. Since then, including that season, 38.6, 35.9, 35.0, 37.6 .0, on the three point shots. Now, you're hearing from a guy that's all in on what uniforms they wear every day. So take this all with a little grain of salt, but 
it sounds like, or or the numbers would tell you, Tatum with the short hair, watch out from beyond the arc. But you have to you have to calm down a little bit because he did play his best basketball during the curls era. During the curls era, era three all NBA first team selections, four All Star selections, three Eastern Conference Finals appearance, two NBA Finals, and the NBA championship. So you really have to pick which one you want, Jack. Are you capable of having normal discourse that doesn't involve conspiracy theories and bullshit? <laughs> Listen, I had to fill 250 words in this article, so I figured I would look at the splits. Sure. There's sure. your short Why for not? the day. All right. <laughs> sure. Mark the timestamp. Hey, gang, let me tell you a little something about game time. Now that the NBA season has come to a close, you got to get yourself out to an MLB game this summer. You want to go to Fenway. You want to go to your local bar park. Game Time is going to get you there. They are an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes tickets easy to get. Prices on Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. Who doesn't love using it? I sure do. I used my Game Time app to get my dad tickets for Father's Day, and I got a fantastic deal. It's so easy to use. Again, you can get those last-minute deals. They have flash deals and zone deals. It's easy. You can take a look at your seat's on the app to see what the view is going to be like before you get there. You don't want to get stuck behind a pole. I'll tell you that happened to me once. It was not fun. Again, last minute deals are fantastic on game time. You can save up to 60% off buying those last minute tickets for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. Download the game time app, create an account, use code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CLNS for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, let's go to the email, <clears throat> see what y'all have to say. Reminders always, you guys can email us at hbtcpod at gmail.com. We read the emails every single podcast, Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Uh, we have a lot today to go over from a bunch of different people. So let's take a look here. We do have some ratless ones as well. Do so we want to save of- those for the actual rat list? <clears throat> How do you want to do that? Uh, sure, I don't care. Okay. Um, <clears throat> fine with me uh from philip celtics glory fellows my portrait vacation nears an end my sunburn is be- uh, beginning to peel and i'm eager to get there. home to enjoy domestic beer and talk celtics with my family and friends this is me thinking about the banner raising ceremony when i see our team looking to the rafters with heavy rings and watery eyes i'm going to be filled with joy hmm. however it is whenever they raise the blank 19th banner that i'm going to shed a tear the blank banner without any words or debates symbolizes everything <clears throat> the organization stands for i have lived worked and been a sports fan in kentucky tennessee florida and texas before coming to massachusetts a decade ago and i can assure you it is truly different here in boston the players know the fans know <clears throat> joe knows and of course brad knows a few months back he gave an interview and said that if they the day should ever occur that they were to raise banner 18 he will wake the next day in pursuit of banner 19 I can't express to you how satisfied that makes me feel as a lifelong sports fan. None of us, um, none of us may ever again follow such a squad of winners, guys who you not only root for, but respect to their core. To me, it's more than just the glory of winning, but the glory of the true resolve, hardship, uh, hardship, overcome and the humility to grow long live these Celtics Phil. <clears throat> yeah. Respect. It would be a little bit fire if they just raised the blank banner in the arena. And they were like, look at it. Every, every time you take the floor, look at the blank banner. But I think if they actually did that, it would backfire and you would have teams just like or, or other fan bases pointing it out all the time. Yeah. Like that they banner's going to stay up there blank forever. Like, <laughs> I feel like we all know about the blank banner in the practice facility, but you don't necessarily hear about it as much on a national scale. Like how many Sixers fans do you think know about the blank banner? Maybe 15, 20 percent of them. Not many. No, less than that. Even I, I don't think they follow enough. I think it's a niche thing. I can't wait for the ring night, though. It's going to be so fun. I may buy a ticket to that. And I don't like to buy tickets (laughs) to games anymore. I don't like just because I think it puts us at a disadvantage when it comes to recording. And I like to be on the pregame and everything. But that may be an occasion where I actually have to buy a ticket. Fair enough. Uh, Next one. Art just says, I know it doesn't matter, but I want to see the Summer League Celtics win the league just because it will steam the clams of the nattering. No- Jesus Christ, nattering nobody's at the morning gab fest. Yes, I am that petty. <laughs> RJ, can you use normal language? <laughs> it confuses me every time. Oh, my God. Our RJ's <laughs> over here with the Dr. Seuss books. Oh, my God. Yeah. Also, new Celtics should get a taste of winning, too. Be well, RJ. Yeah, I mean, fuck it. Why not? Win. Lead the I charge, RJ. Say. If they lose, I need you to go on Twitter and complain. Not everybody needs to complain at everything, Sam. He said he wants to see him win the league. Lead the charge. Defend the wall. 
What how you wanting to see them do something does not also have to equate with the opposite negative of being an asshole and complaining. You have to prepare these really young do. guys for what it's like. It, it's throw, not... them in, throw them right, right in the deep end. Next one, trivia time. What year's roster had the most players who would eventually be retired to the Raptors for the Celtics? Oh. Next answer, fall in the next email. What year's roster? Ooh. <clears throat> that is so I, I saw this email come in. I didn't research it, but I did do some thinking at the time. Initially, what I came to was 1984. I feel like one of the Russell teams has to have it because they have all those, like, it's like 21, 22, 23, all retired with Russell. Kuzi's retired. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 2008 only has two. 86, I don't think, has as many because Cedric Maxwell was on the team anymore. I think it's one of the Max teams. With I think Bird, it's 1984. Max. I don't know. I don't know years or anything, but I assume it's one of the ones with like Larry and Max and Michaela. I Hayley. think DJ wasn't there yet for 81, <laughs> so that's one less retired number. My, I'll go 81. If, if you go 84, you have three, 33, 32, double zero. 31 so it's at least five i don't actually know the answer the answer uh 63 the answer to the question which year celtics gotcha. is 62 63 with nine players bob Cousy, john havlicek tommy hines and casey jones sam jones jim luskatok frank ramsey bill russell and satch sanders jungle dim luskatoff is the reason i worded the question as uh i did as his los Losky came from the rafters and not his number 18, which he left behind and was eventually retired after Dave Cowens wore it for his career. Bonus question to kick around. Who do you think will have their number retired next? The two most likely candidates are Danny Ages 44 or Ray Allen's 20. Be well, RJ. I don't think either of those. Will get I don't think either one of them. So be Tatum I think Brown, yeah, probably should whoever be retires Tatum. first. Maybe Maybe Horford, Horford, actually. Mm, He's been here as many seasons as KG. Mm. Won a title. I guess I think that's borderline. I think oh, it's it's oh, definitely like up in the air. But if you want, like, I bet odds, like if you had betting odds, he would be towards the top just because of retirement coming soon. Played a huge part in the Celtics. Like he joined as a free agent years ago before people were really doing that. And he kind of made it cool to come play for the Celtics. again. Yeah, I think um, I think Horford makes sense. Uh, next one. Let's see. Final spot theory. This is from Joe. Shout out Joe, the guy I met at the Al Horford. Joe, hello. Morning, fellas. Trying to look this up, but with the new CBA, there isn't much info on the subject that I can find. That being said, I believe Brad Stevens, for luxury tax purposes, is going to come into the season with the 15th spot open. I think that they'll try to walk up to whatever deadline the open spot fine is. Excuse me. And then sign a veteran for non-guaranteed deals. Unless it's a buyout, which I don't think the C's can do as a second apron team. I think they can. They just can't do it if they make over a certain amount. Right. There's restrictions um, on... <laughs> Exactly that. Yeah. Or elevate somebody off the two-way, maybe Peterson, to a non-guaranteed rest-of-season deal a la Keda. If I'm correct, luxury tax and therefore tax added to the repeater on players who signed uh, mid-season is prorated, and the Celtics are able to wait before getting fined. They can fill the spot by the end of the season and save 5 to $8 million in repeater tax. Also, some slander. Watching LeBron, uh, excuse me, watching the Lebanon Bahamas game, I'm Lebanese myself and was really surprised that Omari Spellman, if you remember him from the Golden State years, is a Lebanese citizen. Yeah, and it's hilarity watching DeAndre Eaton turn into Prime Hakeem. I could not imagine being a Trailblazers fan watching uh, the same guy who took a midseason snow day, W, by the way, uh, <laughs> ball out in a random qualifier game, giving 100% effort, looking for Rob Williams to snatch that guy's starting spot. Have fun in Vegas, Joe. W, by the way, got me. Mm-hmm. I can respect that. Any other job, you're like, damn, you got yourself a free day off? Nice. Um, I think all of these FIBA teams just kind of try and finagle everything. Like, do you remember when Peyton Pritchard was on some podcast and he was like, yeah, like Sudan tried to get me to play for them. Yes. Yeah. Omari Spellman acquired Lebanese citizenship in 2023. So he's he's not actually Lebanese. He just became a citizen so he could play for them. I'm Lebanese out on all that team. I don't like that. <clears throat> yeah, it's odd. It's very awkward. Um, <clears throat> Next one is OK. That's a rat list. We'll skip the rat list for now. RJ says, what I want Summer League Santa to bring me. Uh, happy Sunday, folks. Uh, Summer League is really like Christmas in July for me, so here's my wish list. First, as my gift to you, I invite everyone to read and comment on my fan post. RJ's guide to watching and enjoying Summer League. <clears throat> everyone go read it. My wish is now, I want the Summer Seas to flex their championship deal in a hard. People are going mm. to come for them this year, so we'll be into it. Let the guys who are experienced in the system, Davis and Springer, Walsh, Peterson, and Kata, start the first game <clears throat> and show off the, what familiarity with team concept and other means on the court. 
this will set a great example for the new guys and <clears throat> the aspiring guys. I want to see the new guys treated like the new guys. I don't mean belittled or hazed, just that they have to earn their minutes away uh, by playing the right way within the Celtic system and learning to grow beyond what they are starting with. For Shireman and Watson, I, it means kinds of swapping roles. I'm much more interested in Baylor's defense and Anton's three-point shooting than the other way around. <clears throat> Give me the majority of the point guard minutes to J.D. Davison. Even if he's likely to be passed over by Jaden Springer, the kid has balled out for the Celtics for two years. He's earned the chance to show his game off. Uh, his show his game has grown, and if it doesn't move him up the Celtics ladder, it gives him footage for finding his next gig. <clears throat> Quick hits for the rest. I want Kata to get some practice running KP's play set. For the, f- for the first two months of the season, he'll be the closest Boston has to Porzingis, so they should start early getting him used to that role. I don't know about that. Peterson and Walsh get to play the Jays in Summer League Christmas pageant. Don't scoff. Peterson has shown at Maine that he can be a three-level scorer while Walsh is building out from his defense and three-point shooting. Besides, if you're going to advance, model yourself after the best. Along the same line, Springer gets to crib, gets to crib from D. White and Drew's playbooks. Um, for Shireman Watson and Aruna Harper and whoever else on the squad, I want to see them show that they're learning uh, in some tangible fashion both what it is to be an NBA player and to play in the Celtic system between the first and last game of the summer. On a more personal note, I hope all the podcasters and reporters traveling to Vegas have a fun time. Y'all deserve it too. Be well, RJ. Thank you. <clears throat> I like all of that. I agree. Um, I don't know how much they're going to have K to play like KP. I think they're just going to have him play the same like rim running, hard nose. Like, I, I don't think he's going to be stepping out for like post up you know, post touches at the elbow or anything like that. Like maybe take some catch and shoot threes, but I, I don't think treating him. I don't know about that. I wouldn't mind seeing some catch and shoot from Nimi. You're absolutely right. Catch and I want to see Nimi playing like prime Shaq. Cause we know he can do it. Sure. <laughs> sure. Um, okay. Next one. Uh, I think from RJ again. <clears throat> yep. RJ, another Celtics trivia question. Even in folks with summer league fast approaching for the seas, I'll pull a little trivia out for you. What do Alper and Shangun, Julian Phillips, Amari Bailey, Blake Wesley, Julian Strother, Keontae Johnson, Bob Carrington, and Demp Bona share in common? I'll give you a minute to ponder. Those eight gentlemen represent the draft hall. Brad Stevens has traded away since he has become GM of the Celtics. Carrington and Bona will see their first production this summer, but apart from Shangun, no one here has shown themselves to be better than Sam Hauser or Peyton Pritchard. And Shangun is who Brad gave it up to bring out Horford back. So Celtics win their end of that deal. Interestingly, Shangun got traded to Houston for a pair of conditional first round picks, neither of which conveyed. <clears throat> so while Brad's own drafting of Juwan Beggar and JD Davis and Jordan Walsh and now Baylor Sherman and Anton Watson hasn't set the league on fire, he has gotten his value out of the draft in his own way. Be well, RJ. <clears throat> yeah. Um, Julian or a parent Shangun's a damn good player. Blake Wesley's and Julian Strother are fine. Bob Carrington should be pretty good this year. But other than that, like we like I mean, o- <clears throat> obviously no complaints. Yeah, Dembo is cool too. Um, yeah. If you would have let me guess, I would have said they all have vowels in their names. Nice. Good one. Good answer. <laughs> um all right, we'll get to the uh Ted, we'll get to your rat lists. Uh, when we do the rat list at the end of the show. But in the meantime, let's go to the NBA part of the show, starting with a familiar face. Daniel Tice has signed a one-year deal with the New Orleans Pelicans. Will not be coming to Boston, but he will get a chance to probably get some real minutes there because they do not have any big man depth as they traded Larry Dance and did not re-sign Jonas Valanciunas. So it's him and uh, Eves Messi, Missy, who is their rookie center. So probably going to see some Tice minutes next to Zion next year. Pelicans, watch out for the Pelicans this year. <laughs> Officially, Pelicans, do we claim them as our Western Conference team on this show? It's probably still the Grizzlies, but yeah, they're up yes, there. the Grizzlies. The two teams that are borderline Eastern Conference teams, we claim them in Minnesota, but Minnesota doesn't have a Celtic, so it's not as fun. Yeah, I can get my um, Tice, Tice Zion at <laughs> pick and roll. Watch out. <laughs> Shout out, Tice. Start making That's- up stuff that we're excited for. <laughs> Next one, Dario Saric and Ivica Zubac got into a fight, apparently, uh, in I don't know where. Where did they go? They didn't happened? fight each other for what it's worth, but they okay. they, they were on a team. Ah, uh, is there a video? No, they got removed. Video. No, it's not. It oh, it removed. got removed? Yeah. I assume it's on Twitter somewhere. I'll just go on Twitter. Yeah. Um, I Wow, this got removed like in the last hour <laughs> since I put the sheet together. Let's see. Okay, yeah, I see the TMZ video here on Twitter everywhere. So let me pull this up. Uh, they got in a fight in a nightclub in Greece. Athens. I better um, be careful. Oh, my God. He's huge. <laughs> Vijay Zubac is giant. That's insane. Pull um, it up. I, oh, I, I did pull it up. Can you not see it? No, it's not <laughs> up yet. Are you? 
Yes, it is. Are you on crack? <laughs> is on I'm screen. not. Do I need to present my stream yard to you so I can show you what it looks like? Uh, you might need can to I fix your stream yard because I think it's not. Oh, it. now it's up. Okay. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah. So there's the big, big he boy Zubat. Giant. <clears throat> I don't know where Sarich is. I don't know if he shows up. He runs video, in. But... <clears throat> yeah. Are they from the same country? I don't know where Darius is from. Darius signed a uh, a contract of his own for, with the Nuggets, which is really good. Oh, he's down there, hanging out. <laughs> oh, he's on the ground. See, is, is he in? Is he choking oh, the guy out? I don't know where he is. I think he's getting choked out. No, oh, no. I, I don't know where Dario Saric is. Yeah, I, I did not see him in this video at all. That's here's, definitely not Dario Saric. Here's what the report says. <laughs> NBA players of each Zubox and Dario Saric were involved in an intense physical altercation at a nightclub near Athens, Greece, early Monday morning, just hours after the two competed for Croatia. So, yes, in an Olympic qualifying tournament game. TMZ Sports obtained a video taken inside the popular Boulevard Beach Bar. Nice but there he is. Shout out to RJ at 5.30 a.m. Starts with the L.A. Clippers big man already involved in a scrap with someone as several men who appear to be club security rush up and grab him from behind. As the chaos unfolds, Saric, who had just agreed to a two-year deal with the Nuggets, bolts into a crowd to try and help Zubac, but appears to get shoved by another staffer. At one point in the scuffle, a man puts Saric in a chokehold, so yes, he was getting choked, and brings him to the ground where he laid for several moments. Meanwhile, a man is shown yelling at Zubac and telling him to calm down, which worked as he stepped backwards with his hands up. Eventually, Saric gets up and stumbles towards Zubac, and the group of men push the Hoopers to the exit. Damn. Sounds like I'm going weeks. to Greece two weeks too late. Things get active in Greece, apparently. <clears throat> but uh, cool. Good for them. Tough look for Saric. <laughs> yeah. You uh, got you got pushed. I uh, I would end up probably in a chokehold too if I was in the scuffle. But as a six foot nine NBA player, I can say tough look. You probably got jumped or he probably did get jumped. Yeah, he probably didn't see it coming. Uh <clears throat> next thing, Brandon Ingram, uh, no one wants him. So apparently oh, no. <laughs> they were like he, he could have been in the DeJounte Murray trade, like there were rumblings of it, but one, Atlanta didn't want to trade Clint Capella, and two, they didn't want to pay him. And so those were the two holdbacks in that. And apparently the market is cold for him because just no one wants to pay this guy, which is probably not ideal if you're Brandon Ingram. Right. We we talked about it on this show when we were discussing the Ingram stuff. And it is just a really tough spot because you feel like he's an okay player, but it's not going to be worth your while trading for him because you're going to have to re-up and pay him one of those outrageous extension contracts that yes. you're seeing all these guys get. And – while you may feel like he's worth trading for, you don't feel like he's worth paying $50 million a season. He's just not. Yes. Um, yeah, this came from The Athletic that no one is. And then NBC Sports is just the trade market's cold because no one wants to give him another contract. It's just he doesn't like make it like he has to be in a very specific situation for him to be worthwhile. He's in Tobias <laughs> Harris land. Yeah, he's in danger bit. of being in Tobias Harris. Like. Yeah, I don't think he's quite as bad as Tobias Harris, but he's yeah, he's he's it's not ideal. Um, next, Paul George just trashed the Clippers on his podcast, uh, detailing like what their negotiations were like and giving like <clears throat> exactly how the negotiations broke down. Uh, I'll find it here because um, I saw it pop up. But effectively, he was like, "Yeah, this is what they offered. This is what I asked for. This is then what I asked for." And then this is like, et cetera, like going about or, or, you know, through each step of the negotiation process. I'll pull it up on Twitter, but it started at like, oh, I want two years or let me see. Let me see. Oh, George Clippers, just because I, I know there's like um, like somebody broke it down on Twitter. That's much easier than me reading the whole thing. Yeah. So the first offer, uh, L.A.'s first offer, I should say, was two years, 60 million. Um, then Paul George asked for the same contract as Kawhi. And then. He asked for three years, 150 with the no trades clause. And then his final ask was four years, 220. And they said no to all of them. And now he's in Philly. <laughs> this this negotiation is really funny to me because it almost reminds me of like playing Monopoly with my friends on Xbox like back in the day. So the way negotiations in Monopoly would work 
is you would propose a trade and then if somebody was fucking with you they would just uh continuously raise the price on whatever it is that's what paul george did he he gets like rejected for 30 million or i'm sorry he rejects the 30 million a season offer then yeah. he's like hey i want what Kawhi's getting yeah then he's he like down. hey oh he went down well Kawhi's getting more than 50 a season yeah i think well then he's like i want a 50 million dollar contract per season with a no trade clause which he is, is Kawhi's getting yeah, 52, then 50, then 50.3. So effectively, you're just like the same. It's very similar. And um, then he comes down to four years, 220 million, which is more than 50 more, million yeah. a season. And it's long term. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Why not? What, what do you expect him to if do? If you're the Clippers, <laughs> seriously, I think the Clippers were stupid for this because they got nothing Agreed. for him. And you can't really uh, like spread that money anywhere else with a new CBA. No. So it would have been nice to have somebody there. But at the same time, it's just kind of funny. He was like, actually, I, I actually want more money at the end. Well, I also think a part of it is like it's low at the start because he had been hurt the past few years. And then he played a 74 game season. So he's like, OK, but now I can be healthy. And so, of course, yes. you're going to go up if you play a full season and you're an all star and you play it really well. Like also, as you're getting closer to the end, he's gaining leverage. He's not losing leverage because he's going to be a free agent. So why would you go down as you're about to gain leverage of being a free agent and allowing other teams to talk to you? Why would you go down on your offer? Like he, he was the last, like anything but desperate at that point. Cause he knew there'd be a market. It's not about like the desperation for me. It's just like people online being like, damn, like he got done dirty. Like he did. Like ultimately he did. He did. <laughs> but like, it's not, it's not like he was like, really playing ball with them like he was raising his offer like as the thing went on well he played ball and then when they didn't pay him he was like all right well i mean it's not like he he had a bad se- if he if he got hurt again all season then he would probably have lowered his offer a little bit but right. at the same time there were like so many external factors that like allowed and like encouraged him to raise his offer like not only was he having a good season but he was playing more than he had ever in an LA jersey so he's like all right well now I've proven to you that yep. I can play more so I'm gonna ask for more money because duh and also I'm about to be a free agent and so I'm gonna raise my offer because I mean this is like the reason he asked for four years 220 he got four years 212 from Philly the Clippers could have paid him more than Philly because bird rights and all that stuff and so he's like all right I'm gonna be a free agent now anyways and so the only way you're gonna keep me now is if you pay me more and if you're not gonna clearly then goodbye and so goodbye <laughs> For what it's worth, Paul George in the playoffs, 19 and a half points, 41% from the field, 36.7 from three, which isn't too, too bad. But the efficiency was a little low. The playoff, the playoff performance wasn't quite there. Um, so the team got cold feet after that, I suppose. But again, like we talked about, that money isn't being put to use anymore. Like you have this there new arena, you're trying to fill seats, you bring back Harden. Like, I don't really know what the Clippers expect to happen this season. Maybe they're just banking on Kawhi being healthy, but good luck to you. He's playing in the Olympics right now. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Also, You're apparently, Clippers fan, are you mad at him playing in the Olympics right now? He, no, he talked about it. He was like, I played as much as I could, and I got hurt, and I tried, but I couldn't because I was hurt. Like, it's just the story. Like, it's just what it is, and now I'm not hurt again, so I'm not going to not play because I was hurt at that time, and I'm not anymore. Like, it sucks that it happened when it did, but what do you want to do? Like, <laughs> I just hurt, yeah. man. Like, let me he see. He did I'll try and go out there in the playoffs, in fairness to him. Uh, he said, <clears throat> there was a quote today that came out about it. I want to see if I can find it. Um, I don't know if I'm going to see it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He said, last year, I tried to play as much as possible. Felt great. At a certain period of time, I couldn't go. I tried my best. Uh, that I could, but it's just my journey. I'm going to keep going until I can't. And so basically just like, yeah, I mean, what do you want for me? I got hurt. Like it sucks, but it's just kind of like I get hurt. Like it, it, I'm injury prone, like basically admitting it. Like, I, sorry, but I can't fucking help it. Can I? Um, but yeah, he did play, I think more than he had in a long time, the last regular season. So he, Kawhi played in yeah 68 games last year. That's the most he's played in since 2017. So it's pretty good. <laughs> it's, it's pretty good. Uh, also, there was rumblings that a Paul, oh, Dr. J helped recruit him to Philly. So that's a cool thing. And then apparently a Paul George Clippers trade or Warriors trade was close uh, per mm. Paul himself. He said 
that was a real thing and that was close to being done. That deal was close to being done from what I was being told in the situation. They was expressing how much they wanted me there, how I could have fit perfectly with Draymond, Steph, and Clay. Probably would have stayed. Pajemski, Kaminga, Wiggins, they didn't know how or what package was the trade was going to be. Looney was going to be there, so it was a very intriguing opportunity, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but yeah, so that could have happened as well, which would have been interesting. I understand the pettiness from the Clippers. Like, you don't want to trade them in division. Like, the Clippers have been a rival to the Warriors, especially, like, in the early dynasty days. Like, those were the two teams. There's a big, huge rivalry when Doc was the coach of the Clippers. Mind you, it was, like, 10 years ago now. But still, like, I'm sure there's an element of that in the front office with the Clippers where they didn't want to do that. At the same time, they lost the man for nothing. They did. Also, um... It's the Embiid thing. It's not a rivalry. We never fucking win. <laughs> that wasn't a rivalry. <laughs> they didn't Clippers like each never other. Won shit. Uh, they didn't like each other, but the 76ers. But, like, with that like being said, own. right? Like, if you're the 76ers, yeah. would you do, like, Paul, you have Paul George, would you trade him to the Celtics? Maybe. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, a tough right. choice, right? <clears throat> I saw something on TikTok that was like predicting the way the Eastern Conference is going to play out. And it had the Philly beating Boston in the semis. And I was I was so tempted to tweet out, when will they learn? <laughs> when will they learn? <laughs> you should. Everyone, <clears throat> everyone will like that tweet. <clears throat> um, Last up, before we get into the rat list, let's go over NBA free agency roundup. I don't think much has happened um, I think since the last time we did this. Officially went through when, when yes, we recorded it was, last. It was like discussed. It was like there were rumblings, but we didn't know what the official thing would look like. Well, Demar Derozan is a king, and Harrison as Barnes soon as he gets spur. there, who's a spur? Harrison Barnes. Harrison Barnes. He's not like a bum. No, they have a good. No, team. like that's Bro. a decent pickup. Let me ask spur. you this: If they roll out Chris Paul, Devin Vassell. Harrison Barnes, Keldon Johnson, and Victor Wembanyama. <laughs> that's that's not bad. <laughs> I, they genuinely couldn't uh, compete for a playing spot. Or and Steph- I didn't even mention Stephon Castle, Jeremy Sohan. Like they've they got something going over there. Um, the funny Darius thing Arch about this is, as well. mm. my knee jerk reaction is to be like, "Are the Spurs stupid? Why don't they tank for a Cooper <laughs> flag?" But then. talked about this like they were losing on purpose and it was just really difficult to go in there and show up to work every day and go and want to play basketball when you know your team's trying to lose games on purpose like you don't want that kind of culture to develop in san antonio you don't want Wemby to have to start his career that way you don't want all of the spurs tradition the spurs basketball that people talk about with great ball movement good coaching like with popovich you don't want all of that to get replaced by oh yeah they're tanking they're a tanking team even though they have quality players so I do respect them for trying to compete, at least by what these roster moves say. <clears throat> Did you see what happened today with Cooper Flag? By the way, he's dominating. Apparently, he was just like killing the team yesterday. Like the select team was winning at one point, like late in the game. <laughs> like, they, like Cooper Flag had them fucking cooking. Let me let me pull up this. This I know we're talking about free agency stuff, but like he he had them like kicking Team USA's ass for a little bit. Is Anthony Davis on him? He just bro, he's huge. It, it like he is gigantic. <clears throat> New England. 31. Dude. Let's see. It's tough. Celtics, Superfly it's not too late to again. tank. <clears throat> Runs the break, kicks it out. And then he just gets the and one over everybody. He dude, he's a freak. <clears throat> he's a freak. How long how many side. days or how many media availabilities, Jack, till LeBron's like I knew this kid was gonna be special years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's probably he's probably talked about Cooper Flag before for sure. We're prob we're definitely due for one. Hmm. Oh, yeah, shout out Cooper Flagman. He was cooking. Um, other than that, free agency. Uh, I don't think we missed anything else. I'm just uh, Caleb Martin signed with the Sixers. I think. I don't oh, know if that's that a last big time. one. Um, yeah, clearly. And uh, the, the best part about the signing is Woj was like, "Hey, everybody, <laughs> uh, the Sixers told me they deliberately signed him because they want to beat the Celtics." And Caleb Martin is the did that come out? of beating the Celtics was it that for that reason? I thought he just tweeted the stats. Basically, I think him tweeting the stats was. Remember when okay. Woj came out before Game Seven and was like that, though. tweeting okay. about the fouls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't actually so, say like they signed yeah. him to play. Okay, okay, okay. Um, <clears throat> Cody Zeller was a part of the sign and trade with the Hawks. Um, you should have just left that missed. there and made me guess what team he signed for. <laughs> I should. Oh, we should have done that. I can still do that. Simone Fontake already signed with the Pistons. Yep, our um, Pistons good signing. Let's see who else did I miss. Malik Beasley. 
he has joined um Pistons. Your Pistons, correct? <clears throat> Who else? Let's see. We know Alec Burks. Did you you know Alec Burks? Yep. Newest yep. Heat inbred. Heat. Um Torian Prince. Joined the Bucks. The Bucks, correct. Jordan McLaughlin. He went uh he went west. I don't remember what team. Correct. It's one of the California teams. Mm-hmm. Which one? Did you the Warriors? Nope. Kings. Clippers. Oh, okay. Kings. Well. Damn. Uh, and I think that's about it. Uh, I think that's all the stuff we missed. But uh, yeah. All right. Rattless time, Sam. What you got? Pull them up. Pull up the emails. We'll let Ted go first. Oh, or we yes, can so rotate we... through Ted. We can, we can go around the horde with Ted. He sent three of them. <laughs> All right, we'll start with Ted. So Ted's first rat list of the day. And a reminder, as always, if y'all watch, uh, give us your rat list as well. Let me actually put Matt on the screen quick. I'm, I, I, do I got it. Oh, okay. Um, it first loaded. rat list from Ted. Uh, yeah, your, your internet's cooked today. <laughs> My internet's cooked. I'm video. here. I'm here. I'm in the thing. Hey, it's, it's wild. That's better than most days. There okay. I'll get him off now. Okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, Ted says ice cream. Hi, Sam and Jack rat list customers at ice cream shops that can't decide on a flavor and require multiple samples and still can't make a fucking decision. You like ever have it. this one? Respect. Um, I know a guy who takes you his time sometimes. Him. You oh, can, no. guess who, you can guess who takes his time occasionally. Is it, I mean, it has to be Danny. There's only so many. No, 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 no. Oh, brother. You're going to be mad. Is it one of our friends? Like our friend friends? No, it's my, well, it's you. No, it's oh, Henry. Henry. Bro, come on. How did you not know it was Henry? I kind of forgot about I forgot Henry was a, a, a suspect in this. Yeah, yeah. Henry, Henry is very slow. He's gotten as a lot soon, better, but it was bad. as soon as I saw this email, I'll pull it up while I talk. All mm-hmm. I could think of was the curve episode. There's a curve episode where Jer- uh, Jared, Larry, and Jeff are in a frozen yogurt shop, and this lady just keeps asking for samples, and Larry lets her. <laughs> I'm if Ted YouTube? hasn't seen this, he's going to appreciate this very much. I'll pull it up on YouTube. I can probably with all probably respect, faster than me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay. <clears throat> um, here we go. I've got it. Here's no the clip. copyright. It no is... copyright. No copyright. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Just gonna create more editing for Jack later, but we'll find out. <laughs> Raspberry chocolate, whatever that is. Got a long wait. Oh, could I try the tiramisu? It's good. That's a good one. That's a good one. Get that. Get that. I think I will. Yeah, get that. Thank you. Get that. And I think I'd yeah. like to try the banana, please. Banana? Whoa. It might taste like, let me get a banana. And some chocolate. I mean, this is really this is chocolate. so rude. Just the plain chocolate. You know, you're like a sample abuser. That's but what you are. With you. You're abusing your sampling privileges. What One do you think sample, I have these two samples the most. For? You can't just go on sample oh, yes, after yes, sample. Yes, I can. No, I can. you can't. You know what? I'm just gonna have the plain vanilla, please. Thank you. Oh, Thank a decision's you. been made. Oh, enjoy. Thank you. Vanilla. She winds up with vanilla. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> this is a great episode because that, the- that woman is um the dean of a school his friend's daughter's trying to get into and he has to like like bribe her with like flowers so he steals the flowers from a grave site uh and gets caught <clears throat> it's tough tough for him um i mean it's it's an oldie but a goodie relish traffic man it was brutal getting home today i i just i just sat in it like i was getting out there's a community event in roxbury and I just sat in traffic for like an hour and 15 minutes and a drive that should have taken me 35. And it made Did you me listen to anything die. good? <clears throat> I just listen to music. Anti Rattlers, the DJ on Spotify. It's just like, it's like a DJ feature where it like. Oh, I hate it, this. Why? I don't like, I don't like the AI DJ. You're a loser. It just like, it plays stuff that one, it knows you have listened to a lot in the past. Two, it thinks you would like. And three, good stuff. I like. It's good. I enjoy it. Doesn't it like good. talk to you too? It's like this one's coming up every, next. Like, every like five songs, which is a little weird, but I still like that it like mixes it up so I don't have to actually like pick shit. I think Spotify does that anyway though. Like if you just like play a song, it'll just play like other songs like it. There's like smart shuffle, yeah, but this is easier because I can just throw it on and I'll find like new stuff and, and old stuff and a bunch of stuff. I hate I hate AI, man. I can't get behind it. <laughs> Terrifying. It's all fun and games until until they're ruling the world. 
it just it just it just looks at your music taste and plays other similar music taste. Mm. <laughs> you're, you're really it begins. You're just a full next thing you know. It's taking your job. Your your ability to be a moron knows no bounds. <laughs> you're, you're, <laughs> it's it's truly incredible. No, speaking of, I've been working at home, so my Rattlus is just fucking laziness. Like I don't have. I mean, how many pods in a row, Jack? Have I had a hat on? Probably like a all of them. Amount. I haven't paid attention. But probably. A lot. I'm just so lazy. I don't want to do my hair. I. I mean, yesterday I had a hat on because I was absolutely drenched from basketball, which is a, a pseudo rat list in itself of how hot it was in that gym. I was dying. Sweat through mm-hmm. my shirt. It was crazy. Uh, but yeah, man, when I'm at home, like I just I don't have to like get dressed up. I don't have to do my hair. I don't even have to shave like. It, it is a whole different way of life. I mean, you know about it. You you entirely work from home. But like, yeah, <laughs> you don't have to do your hair either. You just wake no. up. I, I kind of miss that. My hair just lives. Like, you know, I used um, to have short hair back in the day. Going back to Ted. Let's see what else Ted got. Uh, he says, rat list, parking lots, hijack and Sam, rat list people that get in the car at very busy parking lots while other cars are waiting and just sit for minutes before moving. Mm. Yeah, I agree. This is, I, I had this one. I am a big sit in the car guy and just be lazy, but I, I, <laughs> obviously if there's people waiting, like you can't do it. Like I'll sit in like my driveway and I'll just sit there and I'll like go on my phone and just like fi- like finally I'm home and I'm just like lazy and not getting out of the car. But like I'm not gonna do it if there's like actively people looking for spots. There's also just not many places around me that have people actively looking for spots. Like that's just not a problem I run into, I guess. Nothing worse than like so we have the Providence Place Mall, very busy place. Like anytime you're in a parking garage, you're obviously trying not to go up a level. It's just like part of the game. You want to find the closest space to the exit. Like you don't want to have to park far away. And when you're looking, you really don't know if there's like an open space. And then you see those brake lights on. It's like you have to imagine being in a desert and you just see the mirage of like water when you're absolutely dehydrated. Well, the worst is when it's a small car tucked behind a big car. Oh, it is the worst. Yeah. (laughs) Mm -hmm. That or this time of year, motorcycles, motorcycle bad. I, I'm not convinced motorcycles shouldn't have like designated spots. I'm not convinced they should be legal. <clears throat> Ban them. I I'm not that against that. I, I'm kind of out on the motorcycles. I don't I don't really think we need motorcycles. One, they drive between traffic, especially in the highways. Mm. Just not allowed. Motorcycle not legal. privilege. Fuck you. You Two, should open your door one day. And clip I agree. Two, I'm constantly in fear that I'm going to just kill them because they're not yes. wearing helmets and they drive like morons. And three, the parking space thing, which is just a given for itself. And then, like, you don't deserve to take up. We don't spot. see them sometimes. <clears throat> yeah. And you also just you shouldn't be able to allow to take up a full spot. Go go park it somewhere else. Like you can find space elsewhere. I, I, I don't know motorcycles yet. And not for nothing. Apologies if you're listening to this and you have a motorcycle. People who drive motorcycles. You can tell they drive motorcycles. <clears throat> yeah, dude, they're probably jacked, have really good facial hair. Yeah, and act like fucking assholes because they think they're cool because they drive motorcycles. <laughs> My dad used to drive a motorcycle. So sorry, sorry, dad, but he doesn't anymore. Wait until he hears about this. You're going to ruin his day. He's going to be enjoying <laughs> the podcast and he's going to hear motorcycles and he's going to have his eyes get wide. Apologies if I'm wrong. I think he crashed it, so I don't think he's going back anytime soon. Oh, no. <laughs> he's a, a future lesson tale of maybe don't drive a motorcycle. <clears throat> yeah. Um, mm. I'm trying to think. Uh, Rattles the heat. It's so hot. I hate the heat, dude. And those inbreds. A lot worse in Vegas, too. But I went to this community event in Roxbury today, and I drove from the Arbach Center to a parking spot. And the parking spot was like an eight-minute walk from the place I was going. I'm like, all right, it's whatever. <sighs> Easy. Sweating through my shirt by the time I get there. It was tough. It was so, so much worse than I thought. Uh, and then the gym that the event was in, no AC. No AC. There too. It, was, it was it was crazy. It was that's tough. cruel shit, man. <laughs> Sully's can't donate some AC. <laughs> I'm sure they could. Uh yeah, dude. The heat's awful. I'm I'm not skeptical of the Vegas heat, but I'm curious about it because I hear it's different. I Someone it's not I, the same as this. I forget who I was talking to today. I think I think it was Taylor Snow, and he was like, "Yeah, but that's like dry heat." I'm like, "Is that really that much better though?" Like, uh, uh. I don't know if it's not as bad. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. How much risk am I putting myself at if I go for a run outside <clears throat> in Vegas? Yeah, more than you think, probably. <laughs> I didn't. I did when we went last time, but that was in the winter. 
Yes, and it was also like the treadmill only, ain't bad. It was like eighty there. It wasn't even that bad there. No, the it was cooler than that. It was like we barely wear <laughs> like a short sleeve when we went. Cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, true. True. Uh, I don't know if it's a rat list. I'm not sure it'll even happen. My dad is thinking about taking martial arts. Okay. Now I'm excited for him. Yeah. I he wants to get some stretching, and that's why he wants to do it. I just hope he never wants to try anything out on me. Can you imagine <laughs> kick that? Your ass. <laughs> he's, like, kick your ass. he's like, I want to try this one on <laughs> you. Like he's my big brother. <laughs> no, I don't think he would, but I half want to do it with him because I'm such a bitch. Like I want to have something in my back pocket where if like I'm ever in a situation and I need to like restrain somebody, I feel like I can do it. <laughs> have your dad compete against Joe. <laughs> if we both like just, just talk and shop with Joe Missoula. Hmm. Um, Ratless. So this is just here, and you should listen to me out here. Apparently, Ratless Zach Levine discourse because I just saw this stat on Twitter. I saw Can you this. see this. So Zach Levine has had 101 teammates in his career. 72 are now out of the league completely. Mm. That is an insane <laughs> statistic. Want to talk about a teammate killer? <clears throat> oh my god, that that is crazy. I I I mean, I've said it to you a million times. I think Zach Levine would still be a very effective player if given the chance to play in the right situation. Like, at the end of the day, like, outside of this past season, like, he did not have a good year this past year, obviously. Like, he has been, like, the poster child for efficient score for his entire career. Like, genuinely, like, you look at some of these numbers, even on the Trash Bulls teams, 48, 37, 85 splits, 48, 39, 85 splits, 51, 42, 85 like he has been consistently super 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 efficient every year and even this year 45 35 85 like that's not bad and he only played 25 games like his last four seasons where he played 60 or more games he was extremely efficient and i think if you put him in a space where like example the kings aren't gonna do it anymore because they got the rosen ironically enough but you put him in a situation where he's like the second or third option on a given night like why? Why not? Like why can't he be effective? Well, that's where that's where this Paul George thing comes into play with Philly. It's like, oh, watch yeah. out for this. Like he just has to beat Tobias Harris. The Levine thing's kind of funny because he's probably older, or he's been in the league longer than you think. Like he's yes. a ten year vet now. Yeah, and he's played what six playoff games? <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> four, four. <He> didn't... <laughs> for yeah it's brutal man like it's just like this is i'm gonna take him out of it it's just kind of funny how some of these guys just are around forever like buddy healed this year played in the playoffs for the first time and like people take it for granted because but yeah. the celtics it's not not a normal thing bro just just <clears throat> ending his i mean you want to talk about like a nice long vacation he got a nice always gets the vacay he <clears> actually just vacation. loves vacation <laughs> let's pull up ted's last rat list i have one more and then we can go from there all right, I don't have anything else, so we can end there. <clears throat> Ted says, supermarkets. Hi, Sam and Jack. Ratless people leaving their shopping cart in an empty space because they're too lazy to walk five feet and put it where it belongs. Fuck yeah, Ted. Isn't I there agree. a guy that does YouTube videos where he just runs up on people that don't put the carts away? <laughs> yeah, he like puts it behind their car so they can't back out. <laughs> it's very <laughs> funny. <laughs> uh, I, I lied. I do have one final anti ratless just because I played my final golf round of the week. I had to get it in just a little bit. Did shoot my best of the week. Was very pleased. And first time in my life, played 18 holes, didn't lose a single ball. Oh, it's I know, pretty good. I know. I was that that was the, I shot a 92, so it still wasn't like amazing. I my best ever is a 91, though. So like it was pretty good, but didn't lose a ball. That was I was like, that's it's damn good. I was very pleased. And my team won. And we beat Henry. So it was like a big, big win. We won by one stroke, too. So it was I feel pretty good. I'm sure it was an exhilarating day out there on the course yesterday. It was awesome. And after golfing four times a week, the tan lines are looking particularly horrendous now. You need to just start golfing in a tank top. Nah, yeah. You think I'm getting in a tank top? Fuck out of here. You should. You should wear like a Pete Rogers. No, no, no. Absolutely not. You would look fly. Uh, Ratless FIFA. So on multiple levels, I was playing FIFA today, and uh, I was playing with my buddy, Devin. We played two on seven. Now he was controlling the any position. So we still had control over all of our people. We were down two to nothing. And these rat fucks in the 90th minute are fucking around with their goalie. They lose the ball. So we get an open net one. And then I turn the ball over and their goalie starts running out. 
and we pick them clean, we score an equalizer. <laughs> so it was the most electric draw ever. But rat listed because I've been playing pro clubs and I'm thinking to myself, what if I got back on 2K? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> what, if, what if I loaded up 2K again? What would that be like? Uh, I don't think I have enough patience or time to be good at 2K anymore. No. But I was like talking with Frank over the weekend, like saw him a couple times and I was like, it used to be fun to play. Like back in the day, we used to have fun, like play park for Mad Long. We would play rec center for Mad I'd Long. I'd play rec like, center again. Me, Ray, and Liam played a lot of 2K at the start of the season. Did it was you? Fun. Yeah, we were pretty good. Um, relatively speaking, obviously. Like we weren't incredible. Like we'd play in these three V three like like events or whatever, and we 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 cook. We play pretty well in um Pro Am. Uh, I just made a center build who could throw full court passes, and these two just fucking cheese ran down the court, and I chuck it to him. Um, yeah, it was it was fun. It was a good time. We would need like two hundred likes on this podcast for me to play two K. Uh, we're not going to get two hundred likes on this podcast. We had a really good. We podcast. did. We had a banger of a Sunday episode. The Sunday episodes are back. Last summer, all of the Sundays were banger days. Dude, the for summer episodes are back. Shout out y'all. Thanks for tuning in, man. We appreciate it. We're posting the shorts too. Go check out the shorts. We're going to do a short every single day. Uh, that's our new <clears throat> project for the summer. Last year we did daily videos and now we're doing daily shorts. So it makes literally no sense why anybody like, or everybody is like all of a sudden watching in the summer. <clears throat> it's just the, the unknown. Like it's just the like, Oh, who are they going to sign? What are the trades? Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Uh, whatever i'm not gonna complain it's fine with me because we're here but appreciate y'all um thank you make sure to subscribe be very cool uh you got anything else uh no no nothing nothing else cool cool in that case uh we'll wrap there appreciate y'all for tuning in make sure to leave a like subscribe to how about them celtics and youtube follow us on spotify and apple leave a review there as well i don't think anybody should i check live let's see did anybody leave a review last time i always ask at the end so i assume people have tuned out by now but Let's see. The last review we have on our podcast and Apple podcast, which if you're listening on Apple right now and you're still there, please leave a review whenever you stop driving or doing whatever you're doing. Um, yeah, the last re- review we have is April 2nd. So help us out there. Go go get us one. Uh, and also leave us five stars. We have 4.6 right now with 31 ratings. Why? Help, please. <laughs> go get that up a little bit. Uh, yeah, I, I'll let Sam take it out. Hey, thank you very much for listening and watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, leave a like, and hit the bell so you don't miss any of our daily uploads. We have full pods coming at you Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday. We have the Summer League preview videos coming out all week, so stay tuned for those. We'll have all kinds of good intel on these new guys for you, so keep your eyes peeled for them. We'll keep you covered for sure. You can also find um, all of our stuff on Spotify and Apple. If you follow us there, like Jack mentioned, you can leave a five-star review and all of the pods and game recaps that go right into your feed. You can email us, hbtcpod at gmail.com. Send in those thoughts on the summer league. Send in your rat list. It was really cool to have Ted chime in today. Anytime somebody pisses you off, that's your hotline right there. HBTCpod at gmail.com. Go ahead. You can also find us on socials at How About Them Seas. Like Jack mentioned, we're putting the shorts up, so they should be on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. They'll be on Facebook, too. Facebook page is just the name of the podcast. You can find our streams there. You can find them on YouTube. You can find them on Twitter. Jack's Twitter is at Jack Smoke VA. Mine is at Sam LaFrance NBA. That's it for us. Bye. Taco, come on, Taco, Taco, Taco.